In this presentation, we'll see the ultrasonographic examination of the female reproductive tract of dogs and cats. So first we'll start with the ultrasonography of the uterus. Um, so first the indication, so we can look for the uterus uh, if uh, there is a anorexia, PUPD, vaginal discharge, uh, all signs that can be seen with the pyometra, for example, uh, if we feel an abdominal mass effect, um, uh, if you want to diagnose a pregnancy or control the uterus after the pregnancy, or if we want to monitor um, the response of the medical treatment in case of pyometra, for example. So the uterus is located dorsal to the bladder and ventral to the colon. So like we can see in this image, so here we have the urinary bladder, the uterus and the colon that is easily uh, recognized by the gas that is located in this lumen. Um, the uterus in general is less than one centimeter thickness at this level, so at the level of the body um, in anostrous period. It will be composed of uh, mostly two layers, so the endometrium and the myometrium are isoechoic and the serosa is hyperechoic. So here we have the serosa, hyperechoic, and the rest of the uterus will be isoechoic. Another example here, the serosa and the endometrium and myometrium. In this uterus here there is a bit of fluid in the lumen. So to differentiate it with the intestines, we can first look at the structure. So we have those two layers. When in the small intestines, we have uh, five uh, layers. So the uh, mu mucosal interface, the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscularis, and the serosa. <coughs> we can also look uh, for peristaltism. So of course, there will be peristaltism in the small intestines, but not in the uterus. And there will be no intraluminal gas in the uterus normally. Uh, we can see some gas in some cases of pyometra, but generally there shouldn't be any gas in the uterus, uh, when on the contrary in the small intestine there is uh, often gas. So the first problem that we can see with the, uh, the uterus is the cystic endometrial hyperplasia. Often it will be an incidental finding in the middle age to older female dogs. It will be uh, due to an abnormal response of the uterus to ovarian hormones and this will create an exaggerated hyperplasia of the wall with an exaggerated uh, glandular secretion. Uh, it can uh, cause um, uh, secondly, secondarily mucometra, pyometra and infertility in some uh, female dogs. So this cystic endometrial hyperplasia will have a typical appearance of a wall thickening and uh, the presence of small cysts in the wall. Um, so the, wall, the cyst will be, in fact, some of them will be so small that they won't be visible with ultrasound. Uh, here we have two examples where the cysts are very big and very uh, recognizable uh, with ultrasound, but some of them are uh, much smaller and uh, much more difficult to see. In some cases, we'll have a beginning of production of intraluminal fluid, so in mucus production uh, by those uh, uh, gland secretions uh, of the wall. So then the second stage would be the, the mucometra, so with retention of this mucinous fluid. Usually it will appear anechoic, but we have to be careful with ultrasound to say just on the aspect of the fluid if it's anechoic or isoechoic to see if it's more mucometra, pyometra, it can be difficult to differentiate. So here we have the uh, urinary bladder and here we have one uterine horn that is filled with anechoic fluid. Then we have pyometra, so in general in those cases of pyometra there is retention of the fluid plus bacterial colonization. So the fluid in the uterine lumen can be either anechoic or cellular. So cellular means that it will be isoechoic and uh, with the swirling movement of the cells into the uh, lumen of the uterus, so because it's pus with a lot of neutrophils and we'll see the movement of those neutrophils. Uh, the uterine wall can be thick because then it will be often secondary to a hyperplasia of the wall. 
um, so that would be in the first stage of the pyometra but if there is a severe distension of the uterus by this uh, pus then the wall at the end stage will really become very thin and can even uh, uh, break and really create an open uh, well, uh, uh, contamination of the uh, peritoneal cavity um, so that will be in case of close pyometra, then the uterus will enlarge, 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 and then the wall will become really thin. So here we have two examples of pyometras, here and here, that are with uh, an echoic to mildly isoechoic fluid with some speckles, so some beginning of cells visible there. Here is just a bladder. We can get also stump pyometra. So in fact, the stump pyometra is a pyometra just at the level uh, of the uterus uh, body and cervix. It's uh, happening when there is an administration of progesterone when there was an incomplete removal of the uterus or uh, when following um, an ovarioesterectomy just after a pyometra. So the pyometra is staying just at the level of the, the remnant of the uterus at the level of the cervix. So uh, it will present the same ultrasonographic features as pyometra, except that it will be very localized just at the pelvic inlet in between the bladder and the descending colon. And it will create here a focal mass effect with a mixed echogenicity or uh, hypoechogenicity. Uh, it won't get the normal uh, tubular st structure of the pyometra. It will just be a focal mass at the pelvic inlet. Then we have the uterine neoplasia. They are quite rare uh, in dogs and cats. Um, they can be due to adenoma, carcinoma, leomyosma, or leomyosarcoma. In general, they will be quite homogeneous hyzoechoic mass, like we can see here on this uh, image. So quite homogeneous, um, a bit hyzoechoic, and it will project in general into the lumen. Sometimes it can have a mixed echogenicity because there is some necrosis or some cystic degeneration within the mass um, and then it will get a bit more uh, mixed with some uh, hypoechoic areas like we can see here uh, appearing in this level. Then we can use um, ultrasonography to diagnose the pregnancy. So a pregnancy in dogs and cats in general uh, can be diagnosed with palpation after 20 21 days of gestation when we can feel the uh, ampullae. Um, on radiography it's much more uh, later that we can see uh, this um, uh, pregnancy. In fact we will see it for sure when there will be fetal mineralization. So in dogs it's after 45 days of gestation and in cats after 36 to 45 days of gestation. So like we can see in this example of a cat, uh, well here it's really the late pregnancy because uh, one is already, uh, one kitten is already going out there. So it's a late diagnosis because in fact bet before those uh, 45 days in dogs and 36 days in cats we will see a uterine enlargement on the radiograph but it won't tell us if it's a pregnancy or if it's a pyometra for example. So we can use ultrasonography. It's possible to detect a pregnancy after 20, 18 to uh, 21 days uh, with experience because it's quite difficult to see in fact. So it's possible but it requires a, a bit of uh, experience in ultrasonography and we will see some fluid field vesicles and uh, uh, like in this example and sometimes the conceptus will be visible within the vesicle. So this is after 18 days, uh, but here it's already more uh, around 21 days, so it's definitely much more easier at 21 than at, than at 18 days, of course. Huh? And then it will get really easy after 24 to 28 days, because then the fetus will be conformed and the heartbeats will be visible uh, here uh, in the thoracic cavity of the fetuses. So there is a different way to try to estimate the age of the fetus, but that's quite difficult in fact. Huh? So we can try to base 